As a space physicist, I'm often asked the question, when are we going to Mars? And the answer is, I haven't got the foggiest. But a group of Imperial scientists, including myself actually, came up with a concept mission that could send us there using current technology. So, how have we done that? Well, firstly, you're going to have to take a rocket to get to Mars. Uh, and actually, that's not going to be much of a problem whatsoever with current technology. Uh, SpaceX's Falcon series, for instance, reckon they could send rather large vehicles to Mars already. So that's fine. The journey to Mars actually takes about nine months, and that's just usually letting uh, gravity do all of the work. And you use that because you don't want to take too much mass along the way. But the journey itself can actually be quite perilous for the astronauts. And that's for two reasons. The first of those problems is to do with weightlessness. We know from the International Space Station that humans don't like being in a weightless environment for a very long time. In fact, those astronauts, after spending six months in microgravity, are pretty much useless when they land back on Earth. They have to be carried out of the capsule. And that would be no good on Mars. The last thing we want is humans just slumping onto the red planet, lying there and not being able to do anything. So how are we going to address these problems of, you know, the muscle degradation, bone degradation, arthritis and everything like that that's going to happen on that journey? Well, this team from Imperial have come up with a novel solution using the principles of when you go round a corner in your car. No, that's right. Uh, you know when you do that, you feel like you get flung out to the side. Well, it's not a real force that you're feeling, it's a pseudo force, which is called the centrifugal force. And by spinning your spacecraft, you can therefore kind of make an artificial gravity. It's not real gravity, but for all intents and purposes for your body, it is. So the Imperial team came up with this massive spinning spacecraft idea to make your body feel good. The second problem of space travel though is radiation and there are two sources of radiation in space. The first of those is galactic cosmic rays and these come from other stars within our galaxy. Actually, we've got really good results from the Mars Curiosity rover. On its trip to Mars, it could actually measure for the first time the sorts of radiation that would be exposed to humans on the way to Mars, and then we can work it back again as well. And it was a bit higher than what some people were thinking. Two thirds, or at least two thirds, of NASA's current limit of a lifetime of an astronaut. So. Whichever people are going to go to Mars, that would probably be the only trip they ever make in space. Which is a bit sad, I guess. But then you're doing a monumentous trip. The second source of radiation in space actually comes from the sun. And it's linked to solar flares. These flashes of light we see on the surface actually emit a huge amount of energetic particles called a coronal mass ejection, or more commonly called solar storms. Now these could have huge impacts on the humans in there, either severe radiation sickness with stuff coming out of both ends, it's, it's really not pretty, or just instantaneous death. Now, Curiosity didn't actually encounter any of these on the journey, they don't happen all the time. So it would be a very risky trip, but not impossible. So assuming that our astronauts get to the red planet alive, how are they actually going to get onto the surface? Now this is actually a bit of a problem as well because Mars has a very thin atmosphere. It's only 1% of the mass of Earth's. So that makes landing in an Earth-like way very difficult, but it also means it's actually harder than landing on the moon which doesn't have any atmosphere at all. So how do we actually have to go about this thing? Well, you kind of have to throw everything at it. Um, the design that the Imperial people came up with isn't the crazy sky crane that they used for the Curiosity rover, which does work but looks mental if you look at the videos. They've come up with a, a more conventional design. They use a heat shield to take the full brunt of entering the atmosphere to start with and slow it down. That gets discarded and then they have these massive parachutes which will slow the craft down even more. And because that's not gonna be enough, because the air isn't thick enough, they then have retro rockets and some rather springy legs to make that nice soft landing onto the Martian surface so that our lovely astronauts don't turn to jelly. 